In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a wheel like this and make it so it's nice and adaptable so you can easily change one small segment and it update on the rest of the wheel. And this is all done with an array modifier and an empty. This is actually a segment from my hard surface modeling course where we make this car here. And it's got lots of hard surface modeling techniques so you can create any hard surface model you can think of. Links in the description. So the way we do this is we start off with a segment like this and then we use an array modifier to array around a circle, as you can see for our finished wheel here. The great thing about this is I can easily go in to my object into edit mode and adapt the shape. And I only have to edit this small section here and it will update on all the other segments and therefore the entire wheel. I'll undo those changes though. And let's go back to our segment. You can see what it looks like. It's not particularly detailed. And I'll go into edit mode. You can see I've got a subdivision surface modifier on here and I've sharpened some edges up. The design of this isn't what I'm going to focus on in this lecture, but I will give you a few tips about how to create a segment like this. So I'll jump back into object mode and hide these objects and start fresh. Now it's a good idea to start in the center of your scene. So shift S, cursor to world origin. You don't have to, it's just slightly helpful. So shift A to add mesh and I started with a circle. Now the vertices is all important because obviously you need to divide your circle up into segments. I chose 30 so I can have 10 segments. Then I pressed R, X90 to rotate it around, went to front view and I can start thinking about my segment up the top here. So into edit mode, into edge mode with two and select those top three. Control I to select the inverse and delete the rest of it. So now I can select these and start extruding them out and creating my shape. The problem is it's tough to be precise like this. That's where the position of the 3D cursor is all important. I'll undo my edits there. It should be the case that your 3D cursor is still on the origin point, as you can see there. So I'll jump back to front view. And if I change my transform pivot point to 3D cursor, I can now press E to extrude and then S to scale and it will scale down towards my 3D cursor. So I can then take this point here, for example, E to extrude, S to scale and bring it down. And you can see it slowly builds up the shape. It's a tiny bit tricky here because I don't want to select this point and extrude it out. I suppose I could rotate it around the 3D cursor, but how do I get it to line up with this one here? Well, I'll undo those changes. For this, you can select these ones here, Shift D to duplicate, S to scale and bring them down. And then I can just fill the face in here. So select those two edges, F to fill, and then I can go back to these edges here, E to extrude, S to scale and zero to bring them into a point. And then I can turn this into some sort of interesting segment. One other slight tip, it's a good idea to select all, E to extrude, and I'll use the Y axis, come out slightly, and then again to face mode, extrude these out, have an actual extrusion that's the whole thing first before you extrude one segment. And I can do some loop cuts in here with control R, and then I can rotate these around, the Y axis, remember I've got the 3D cursor on so I can do this quite easily. So R then Y, and I can do some interesting shapes and all sorts. When you do this, you will have to delete the inside faces. This will be an inside face because it will attach to the other segment here and these ones just here. So I'd need to delete those and on the other side as well and up top here. And of course we can add our subdivision surface modifier, so modifiers here. I can actually go into object mode and press control two to bring up the subdivision surface modifier of two iterations there. You might need a bit of adjustment. It looks like there's some pinching here. That suggests I've got some normals facing the wrong way. If you do have that, then go up to your overlays, turn on face direction, and you can see there's some problems there. I should be able to select all and press shift N to recalculate, and there we go, it's looking a bit better now. And I can go in and bevel these edges a bit I can select this one and GG to edge slide if I want to bring that point in a bit and so on and so forth. So building up the shape should be relatively straightforward from here. So I'll just rename this and I'll hide it and bring back my original. So this is my finished segment. You do have to be a little bit careful with the very end point, especially with subdivision surfaces. The end points where you have triangles can be a little bit problematic. You might need to have an extra edge loop that comes across here. I managed to adapt mine and it turned out okay in the end, but just be aware of that. Okay, so how do we do the array? Well, firstly, I'll jump into object mode and I'll add in an array so you can see what it looks like. So add modifier, type in array, and you can see it creates a new object just here. I'll minimize my subdivision surface modifier and you can see the array. I'll bring it out slightly so you can see the name. 
And if I increase the count, you can see it's creating more just there and less and so on. By default, the array uses a relative offset. And you can see if I untick that, it turns the array off and on. And it's in the X axis at the moment. So it's going across one unit. If I go to front view, you can see it lines up with that point there. And if I add a new one, it will add the beginning at this point here and so on. And you can actually increase the factor like this to split them apart more, but we don't need to do that. What we want to use is an object offset. But obviously before I do that, we need an actual object. So I'm going to press Shift A to add and then use an empty. I'll just use the plane axis. So you can see that empty just in the middle there. And again, it does need to be right in the center. Your 3D cursor should be right where your object origin is, assuming that you haven't moved it. So your empty should appear in the same place as the object origin for your segment of your wheel. If it doesn't for any reason, you can select on the wheel, Shift S, and then cursor to selected, and you'll see the cursor would move to the object origin. And therefore, when I add my empty, it will add in the correct place. Okay, so we've got an object now, so I'll click on my segment, and instead of relative offset in the array modifier, I'll change it to object offset. I'll open up that dialog. Remember, I've turned off the relative offset. Don't keep that enabled because you can use both. So I'll turn that off and under the object offset, I'll use my picker and choose the empty. Nothing happens because we've done nothing to our object in order for the array to have any effect. I'll go to front view and I'll press R to rotate and you can see it's creating those three segments and curving them around in a wheel as I rotate my empty. Let's click on the object again and increase the count to 10. So it should go all the way around at that point. And we're not quite there. So I've just got to figure out the angle for this. If I select the empty, press N on my keyboard, go to item, I can probably figure it out. It looks like it's going to be 36 degrees. And that does make sense. 360 divided by 10 is 36. What you might find, although it's not apparent in this case, you might see a little bit of a join where they meet up. So if we select on our wheel again, under the array modifier, you might need to tick the merge option just there to make sure that it merges these together. If I turn that off and go to wireframe, you should be able to see the connections. If I turn on the merge, you can see they disappear. There is still one at the very ends here. If I open up the merge, you can see the first and last copies. If I tick that, we should see that disappear as well. And now we have our finished wheel just there. So as a quick reminder, we create a section out of a circle. Make sure that your object origins are in the center here. We add an array modifier. The count is all important, and that's how many segments you have in your circle. We turn the relative offset off. If I turn that back on, you can see it tries to go along the x-axis as well, and you can see it's going along the x-axis and then the local x there and so on, which can create some interesting effects to be fair. But we'll turn that off, and then we use the object offset. We use our empty that's in the center there. We rotate the empty round, the amount of degrees required for the amount of segments. And then we remember to use the merge option here and first and last copies, so we have a nice finished wheel. Now, one last thing that's quite important important is if you want to move this object, if I press G to grab to move it, because I'm not moving my empty, it all goes a little bit weird. So do make sure that you select both G to grab to move it around into position. You can always select the wheel and parent it to the empty. So select the empty last and control P and set parent to object. And then all I have to do is move the empty and that will move both of them. And there we have it. Hopefully this is helpful to you. If you like this sort of thing, then do check out the hard surface modeling course, link in the description. If you've got any questions, then do comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.